opportunity to discuss the role of religion in public life. Religion today has a bad press and has been pushed into the margins of society. Even there, key beliefs like the importance of marriage are attacked by those intolerant of the rights and beliefs of others. To me as a Sikh, this pressure to keep religion out of public life is like saying keep ethical considerations out of politics. This is bad in itself, but what's worse <clears throat> is to see some within our different religions reacting to this pressure by withdrawing from involvement in daily life to contemplate the hereafter. My lords, I believe that this disconnect between the practice of religion and the challenges and concerns of daily living is totally contrary to the central teachings of religion. Guru Nanak, the founder of the Sikh faith, was highly critical of some holy men who had withdrawn to the wilderness in search of God. He told them that God wasn't to be found in the wilderness, but in the service of our fellow human beings. He taught that religious disciplines like fasting, going on pilgrimages, and for Sikhs, the serving of food in the Gurdwara to whoever enters, are simply reminders of our responsibilities to wider society. Unfortunately, some people in religion see these as an end in themselves, and no wonder many in wider society see religion as being irrelevant to our lives. And if we look at the behavior of those who misuse religion in the pursuit of power or to justify cruel or discriminatory behavior, we can see why religion has got such a bad public image. My lords, looking about the world about us, it's right to acknowledge the huge advances made by secular society, society in the pursuit of material well-being. Astonishing advances in scientific understanding and gigantic leaps in medical and genetic research mean that we're now able to play with the very building blocks of life with the prospect of treating previously in incurable disease and significantly increasing our lifespan. For some, life has never been so good. But, my lords, not for all. Alongside these positive achievements, we also have a record prison population of some 90,000. More than 10,000 traumatized and bewildered children taken into community care every year. When we consider the annual cost of keeping someone in prison is around 38,000 pounds a year, and that of keeping a child in care some 2,500 year, we get a small glimpse of the financial cost of irresponsible living. Only last weekend, Secretary of State Michael Gove said more children should be taken into care to save them from soiled nappies and scummy baths, sc scummy baths, chaos and hunger, hopelessness and despair. We have record numbers of abortions and teenage pregnancies, binge drinking, not only among the young, but as we've heard recently, even in the elderly, as a way to cope with the tensions and problems of selfish and, and uncaring society. The use of drugs in the search for elusive contentment has risen dramatically. My lords, we regularly address such issues in your lordship's house with questions on what is the government going to do about this or that. The carefully researched answers couched in elegant terms amount to not a lot. This is not a criticism. Limited amounts of money can be shifted about, but the real problems go much deeper. It's a bit like trying to treat the spots and sores of deeper maladies with cosmetic creams. My lords, when Jesus Christ taught man cannot live by bread alone, he reminded us of the futility of pursuing a mirage of happiness through more and better material possessions. The fallout from lifestyles that disregard wider responsibilities is seen in, right, 
is, is seen in rising divorce and separation rates. Children from divorced or separated parents in the classroom, once a comparative rarity, are now all too common, often showing patterns of behavior that link them to physical or emotional abuse. Our different religions acknowledge the importance of the material side of life, but also remind us that this must be accompanied by constant reflection on the ethical implications of what we do, and importantly, active consideration for the wider well-being of society, something that Sikhs call Sarbat Kapala. It's sometimes argued that the problems of se created by selfish living and a lack of wider responsibility can be addressed by better citizenship training. The difficulty here is that citizenship looks at society as it is and teaches children and teaches children to conform to transient and sometimes questionable social norms. Religion frequently challenges such norms. For example, in the 50s, many accommodation to let adverts in shop windows would say, no blacks or colors, accepted by the culture of the times, but opposed by religious teachings. Today, we have both the challenges and opportunities of different faiths living side by side and must now move beyond superficial niceness to actively promoting common values that benefit society. The one God of us all is not interested in our religious labels, but in what we do. Our different religions remind us that the well-being of society starts with the family, and a recognition of the importance of marriage as a committed relationship in which a couple are prepared to endure trials and tribulations and ensure a stable and positive environment for children. In schools, <coughs> children are taught the three R's of basic education. It's in the home children can learn the equally important three R's of right, wrong, and responsibility. My lords, we rightly live in a society where different lifestyles are respected. However, we cannot afford to ignore the harm to children by transient and self selfish relationships. A true story puts it better than any words of mine. Two children were seen fighting in the school playground, hammer and tongues. Finally, a teacher managed to prize the two apart and asked, what's, what, what's it all about? Then, eyes brimming with tears, the smaller boy said, his dad has taken my mum away. We cannot afford to ignore the clear findings of surveys of, by Civitas and ONS that show that in general, married couples enjoy better health and better home care in old age than their single and cohabiting peers. Or the children who live with married parents do better at school. In recent years, government has made tentative attempts to engage with faiths through various government-chaired committees. Unfortunately, the nature of this engagement is often reflected in the name of initiatives, such as PREVENT, geared to preventing religions making nuisances of themselves. Instead of PREVENT, we need a greater enabling focus that helps religions to work more fully at all levels with secular society. It's true that some in secular society are working to address many of the ills of which I've spoken. Religion has a huge potential to add much needed impetus to their efforts in our common goal of a fairer and more responsible society for our children in a world of new challenges and opportunities. <clears throat>